The dispute within the ruling Nepal Communist Party doesn't seem to die down. The two chairmen of the party, KP Sharma Oli and Pushpa Kamal Dahal, have now openly started to pitch their differences publicly on the issues of MCC endorsement and nomination of Yuraz Khatiwara and Bam Dev Gautam in the upper house. Good morning, I'm Abhuday Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. NCP Chairman Dahal reiterates the MCC agreement would be implemented only after amendment, says nomination of Bamdev Gautam as upper house member will move ahead. <music> Government to suspend tourism promotion activities in foreign countries. Tourism minister says promotion would resume once the coronavirus outbreak comes under control. The U.S. has reported its first death from the new coronavirus in the northwest state of Washington. President Donald Trump says more cases likely, but the U.S. is prepared. And Nepal elects to field first against Hong Kong at the ACC Eastern Region Tournament. Pressure on Nepal after defeat against Malaysia. Let's begin with the national political updates. Executive Chairman of the ruling Nepal Communist Party, Pushpa Kamal Dahal, has stated that the parliament would not endorse the American Assistance Millennium Challenge Corporation, MCC, if the U.S. does not agree to amend its controversial provisions. Speaking at a program in Sindhupaltuk yesterday, Chairman Dahal said that the MCC agreement would not be endorsed in its status quo and also reiterated that Vice Chairman Bamdev Gautam would be nominated as a lawmaker of the National Assembly. We have a report. The ruling Nepal Communist Party has clearly been divided into two factions with regard to the MCC agreement. Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli is in favor of endorsing the agreement as it is, whereas Executive Chairman Dahal, Senior Leader Duos Halnath Khanal and Madhav Kumar Nepal and Vice Chairman Gautam are in favor of amending the agreement before the endorsement. The task force formed to study on the agreement has already submitted its report to the party leadership, mentioning that the agreement should not be endorsed before amendment. The task force has recommended seeking a written clarification from the U.S. on whether the agreement is a part of any military strategy and if the agreement would go against Nepal's constitution and sovereignty. The party leadership has so far remained indecisive on addressing the report. In this context, Executive Chairman Dahal has said that the agreement could be implemented only in the condition of eliminating the provisions against the national interests. Dahal not only defended his stance on the MCC agreement, but also said that he is in favor of nominating party's Vice Chairman Pam Dev Gautam as the upper house member. The Secretariat Committee meeting of the ruling party has already decided to nominate Vice Chairman Gautam for the position. However, Prime Minister Oli has already expressed his discontent regarding the decision. The recent turn of events clearly depicts that both the factions are rigid to their respective stances, due to which the ruling party is likely to go through further intra-party polarization in the days ahead. The members nominated by the President for the National Assembly should maintain independence and fairness while living up to the parliamentary responsibilities. However, the issue of nominating an upper house member has recently been dragged into controversy due to it being aimed at power distribution within the ruling Nepal Communist Party and eventually upgrading the National Assembly member to the government's executive position. Going by international practice, the upper house of the parliament should comprise respected individuals who have made significant contribution to the society and the nation. However, in our context, the National Assembly consists of a majority of individuals with mere political nexus and interests rather than the ones who are publicly admired for their national contribution. Moreover, the ruling party itself has decided to nominate of its leader Bamdev Gautam as the National Assembly member, bypassing the provision of the president making the nomination based on the cabinet's recommendation. In addition to it being a controversial move, Gautam also happens to be a candidate who had lost the parliamentary elections. According to constitutional experts, the recent development is against the norms of the National Charter. 
On the other hand, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has been pushing for the nomination of Finance Minister Yuvraj Khatiwara, which risks that Khatiwara would yet again be confined to being a loyal party cadre rather than a responsible parliamentary member. Experts are of the view that the recent turn of events aimed at turning the National Assembly a platform for political power distribution would not only set a wrong parliamentary pre precedence, but would also be detrimental to the national politics. We'll take a short break here. We have more news coming up. Welcome back. The government has decided to halt promotional activities for the Visit Nepal Year 2020 campaign for the time being as tourists visiting Nepal have started cancelling their hotel bookings due to the coronavirus outbreak. Tourism Minister Yogesh Patrai stated that the government decided to halt the tourism promotion activities taking into account the rapid global spread of the novel coronavirus infection. Speaking at a program organized in the capital yesterday, Minister Patrai said that the government would shift its focus on promoting domestic tourism for now. अब भाई विदेश में होने पर्यटन प्रचार प्रसार को काम लाइक किन समय इस तरीके का होता है हमें देश भीतर को पर्यटन प्रबंधन को काम में बड़ी केंद्रीय तूने सों मिनिस्टर भट्टराय एडेड दैट दी गवर्नमेंट वुड रिज्यूम दी प्रमोशनल एक्टिविटीज इन फॉरेन कंट्रीज वंस दी एपिडेमिक कम्स अंडर कंट्रोल the government had been holding promotional activities in different countries for the Visit Nepal 2020 campaign aimed at bringing in 2 million tourists. However, foreign tourists who were scheduled to visit Nepal have started cancelling their bookings with the global spread of the novel coronavirus. And it's time now for the international update. The U.S. has reported its first death from the new coronavirus in the northwest state of Washington. Officials said the patient was a man in his 50s with underlying health conditions. President Donald Trump stated that more cases were likely, but that the U.S. was prepared for any circumstance. Officials also said they were expanding travel restrictions on Iran and urged Americans to avoid hard-hit parts of Italy and South Korea. According to the World Health Organization, more than 85,000 coronavirus cases have been reported in 57 countries around the world and almost 3,000 deaths. The vast majority of the infections and deaths are in China, where the virus emerged late last year. Washington Governor Jay Inslee has declared a state of emergency in response to new cases in the state. It comes as officials on the West on the U.S. West Coast in California, Oregon, and Washington expressed concerns about cases appearing in patients who had not visited an area where there was an outbreak or been in contact with anyone who had. Officials in Washington state yesterday said they were investigating a possible outbreak of the coronavirus at a local nursing home. In total, the World Health Organization says there have been 62 cases in the U.S. so far. A U.S. citizen previously died in the Chinese city of Wuhan, where the virus first appeared. We have more news coming up, but right now it's time for another short break. Welcome back. It has been 13 years since the country witnessed the comprehensive peace agreement between the then Maoist rebels and the government. However, many families who lost their loved ones during the insurgency period are still living in a sorry state. And in this context, we had asked the conflict victims of Province 5, what should the government what should be the government's initiative in this regard? Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Your 
भएन भएको बच्चा बच्चा नि हिजा बिना भए जुन आफ्नो योग्यता दिन सकेका छन् त्यही योग्यता अनुसारले हाम्रो बालबच्चाहरुलाई रोजगारको व्यवस्था गरिदिएन त्यसैमा हामी सन्तुष्ट हुन्छौ It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. And here's the question. What's your take on the lack of uniformity in banks' service charges? Your options are A, central banks' weak regulation, B, lack of criteria, and C, silent service seekers. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the sports news. Sports news. Nepal is currently playing against Hong Kong at the ACC Eastern Region Cricket Tournament. In the match that started just a while ago at the Trade Thaima Cricket Ground in Bangkok, Thailand, Nepal won the toss and put the opposition into bat first. Hong Kong got off to rocking, rollicking start with the two openers putting on a half-century partnership. When the report last reached us, Hong Kong had scored 58 runs for the loss of one wicket in 7.5 overs. This is Hong Kong's first match at the tournament, while it is Nepal's second match. Nepal had defeated Hong Kong by four wickets in its last encounter in the triangular series held in Oman last year. Malaysia is playing against hosts Thailand in another match being held today. Meanwhile, Malaysia defeated Nepal by 22 runs under ACC Eastern Region T20 Cricket Tournament held in Thailand yesterday. It was Nepal's first defeat against Malaysia in 11 years. Electing to bat first after winning the toss, Malaysia notched off 154 runs in the stipulated 20 overs, losing six wickets. Said Aziz top scored for Malaysia with 51 runs. Chasing a victory target of 155 runs, Nepal was bowled out in 19.4 overs for 132 runs. Captain Ganendra Malla and Dipendra Singh Airi put on 67 runs for the third wicket partnership after early loss of Kushal Malla and Paras Kharga. Both Gyanendra and Dipendra scored 38 runs each. Pawandeep and Sejul Izzat Isrul took four wickets each for Malaysia. It was Malaysia's first win over Nepal since 2009. Nepal's leg spinner Sandeep Lamichane reached his 100th wicket milestone in T20 cricket yesterday. Sandeep is the first Nepali bowler to complete 100 wickets in T20 cricket. And it's time now for our special segment, Around the World. On December 31st, 2019, the World Health Organization, WHO, was alerted by Chinese authorities to a number of pneumonia-like cases in the city of Wuhan, the capital of China's Hubei province, as celebrations took place across the country to bring in the new year. The Hubei province and its capital Wuhan have been virtually sealed off and locked down since January 23rd, with schools, offices and factories shut and most travel suspended. On January 11, China confirmed its first death. A 61-year-old man who had purchased goods from the seafood market died from the coronavirus. On 30th January, the WHO declared the virus outbreak as a global emergency. As of 29 February, over 2,800 people have died and more than 83,000 cases have been reported worldwide. Despite over 50 days since the WHO was informed, the virus still presents the Chinese government with the huge challenge of stamping it out. The epidemic has also caused a significant damage to the world's second largest economy and the global economy is no exception. Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Europe, India and North American Sensex market fell more than 10% since its recent record high of 7,162 last week. Temporary factory closures and layoffs have already begun to hit low-wage workers across Asia as quarantines and travel restrictions from the new coronavirus hit supply chains linked to China. As for the number of infected and the death toll elsewhere, BBC Persia reported on 29th of February that over 200 people had died in Iran due to the virus. Italy saw a spike in infections which crossed 650 with over 17 dead. Around 189 people have tested positive in Japan and 4 out of the 705 who tested positive on the quarantined Diamond Princess cruise ship docked at Yokohama, Japan have died. 
UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said on Friday, containment of the global spread of coronavirus was possible, but the window of opportunity is narrowing. Seeing cases in a number of new countries, including now also the African continent. This is not a time for panic. It's a time to be prepared, fully prepared. Heartfelt condolences and tributes go to all of the victims of novel coronavirus and not forgetting the Chinese whistleblower doctor, late Li Wenliang, who issued the first warnings of COVID-19. This is Sarah Sapsanama for Around the World and Kantipu News Desk. And now before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. NCP Chairman Dahal reiterates the MCC agreement would be implemented only after amendment, says nomination of Bamdev Gautam as upper house member will move ahead. Government to suspend tourism promotion activities in foreign countries. Tourism minister says promotion would resume once the coronavirus outbreak comes under control. The U.S. has reported its first death from the new coronavirus in the northwest state of Washington. President Donald Trump says more cases likely, but the U.S. is prepared. And Nepal elects to field first against Hong Kong at the ACC Eastern Region Tournament. Pressure on Nepal after yesterday's defeat against Malaysia. And that's all for the moment. Keep watching Kantipur Television HD for more news and entertainment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.